Here we are finally back on this uh, golf cart rework. This is the EasyGo TXT golf cart. I'm not real sure of the year. This has the uh, 295cc Robin engine in it. This video is a video that is part of a series of videos where I remove, tear down, rebuild, and replace the engine in this, in this golf cart. You can see here I have all the parts cleaned up as good as I'm going to get them anyways. There's the new pistons, rings, seals. This is a new kit that I bought. I think I bought it on eBay. I'm supposed to have everything in there I need. Here's some other parts that are cleaned up and ready to go. Okay, one of the first things we have to do is hone the cylinders. Even though they're in pretty good shape, I'm gonna hit them with this hone really quick anyways. I'm gonna put plenty of oil on the cylinders. I think you're supposed to have a honing fluid, but I don't have any of that. So we're going to try it this way. I'm just going to hit it easily. It looked good to me. Next, I'm going to put these seals in. Here again, I'm going to put some oil on there. That worked pretty good. Now we've got to get this one in right here. Okay, next I'm going to try to get the crank back in there. This bearing has to go against that other one, but I'm going to put some lubricant all over it. Well, that was not difficult at all. <laughs> it went right in. Oh, we're not in all the way with this. I can tell by looking down the cylinder, so I'm going to see if I can tap that on in. Yeah, I think that's all the way in now. I found a service manual page here. It says that these rings are supposed to have an end on top. There is no end on these. Curious to know if the old ones had an end on them. There is no end on these either. One thing I did find is that the rings are supposed to be placed on there um, offset from one another. I also found out that the DF turns toward the same side of the uh, connecting rod that says fan. Okay, it took me a minute to figure out the O-ring, being three pieces. I was trying to put them in individually, but what you gotta do is you gotta group them together and go into the groove all at one piece. Uh, so that got that. There are no markings of N on any of these new rings, even though in the service manual it indicates that the rings are marked with an N, which re represents the top. Um, also, the rings that came in the kit here, the only distinguishing mark that I can see is that the middle ring, uh, they call it the wiper ring, has a chamfer on the inside edge of it here. So it looks kind of like this picture here of this one. Uh, so that's the middle one. The top one, they call it the compression ring. I've looked at it, there is no discernible difference between the top of it and the bottom of it. So I'm just gonna take my chances and put it in the way that I think it might be because there is no difference in it. Let's get this next ring, the middle ring in here. And I also marked the uh, piston according to the service manual uh, where you're supposed to put the grooves of the ring. So the old ring groove should be here the next uh, ring groove will be here, and the top ring groove will be there. So let's see if we can get this top, this middle one in now. Okay, let's see if I can get this top one on. So the old ring's here, this one's there, the top one's supposed to be over here. You can rotate them once you get them in there, but I just try to put them in, in the right spot. And they're a little bit tight. All right, there's that one. Let's go ahead and do the other one now. So there, I've got it lined up. See if we can get it started in this groove down here. And it says to start them and at the groove it goes in and wrap them around there. I would have thought that I would jump from one groove to the other, but that's not what it says. Now 
There it is. Uh, now then I'll rotate that to the oil position, which is right here. I always have the fear of breaking one of these things. There we go. There, they are all on now. Okay, the instructions say to stand the piston up like this and push it onto the wrist pin. Um, obviously, I gotta make sure everything's oriented correctly. Again, the DF or OF goes on the same side of the connecting rod where it says fan. Just go like this. Oh, that's gonna go easy though. I need a little bit of oil in here too, actually. All right. Go just like this. There that one is. While we got this going, let's go ahead and do the other one. Next, I'm going to put the wrist pin clip in. Maybe I can do this without at least flying across the room. We'll see what happens here. Well, that was easy. Let's go do the other side now. That was very easy. Do it on the next one. Be sure and inspect them. Make sure they are in the groove. Okay, I didn't have a ring compressor, so don't laugh. I'm trying to see if it'll work. I think I have them compressed. Put some oil around there. And see if I can uh, tap this down a little bit. Well, there it is. It has a mark on it. And there's a mark on the rod and those two are supposed to line up. Okay. I just have that one hand tight. I'm gonna go ahead and get the other one in. And again, the fan is this way. Okay, we're ready to torque them now. Okay, I'm gonna be using a Newton meter uh, torque wrench here. And like I said, the torque settings for Newton meters is 16.7 to 19.6. That one's good. Check the back ones one more time. Good. It's good. All right, they're torqued. Okay, next we're gonna be putting in the uh, counterbalance shaft. And we'll put, I'm gonna put plenty of oil on here where it goes into the bearing and seal on the end of it there. I'm gonna put plenty of oil on this gear right here too. All right, now this has to go in a certain way. There's a little dot on this gear that has to align between two little dings on this gear. You, I, I doubt that you can see them, but there's two little dings there. And there's a hollow tooth area right there between it. So let's see if we can get this in there and align correctly. There it is. Okay, you see the 
alignment dots on the gears. At this point, we are ready to put this outside cover on. We got to put the gasket on here first. You got to pay attention. There's a, a seal or an O-ring right here that did not come in my kit. So I left that one in there. And I'm going to reuse it. This is the passageway that sends oil all the way up into the head and lubricates the camshaft. Okay, now then we're getting ready to put this side cover on. I've already squirted some oil down in these bearings, but I do need to go ahead and put this seal in right here. Is this one that came in the kit. I use this block of wood. I can tell if the seal is going in straight or not because I can tell by the level of it. There it is, it's fully seated. This is the gasket, it can only go one way. Got to make sure that all the surface is cleaned up. There's that seal still in place. I'm going to put some oil all over this stuff to where it'll go on uh, a little easier, hopefully. And it has two larger bolts that go in these two holes up here. And then it has several bolts this size, 10 millimeter heads on them that go in these other holes. So these are different up here. Okay, we're ready to torque. Okay, next we're going to put in the oil pump. We have a new seal that came with the kit. Put that in there, and I'm going to put plenty of oil on all of this. I don't think you can have too much oil at this point in the game. Okay, this is the crankcase vent. It's got a reed valve. There's a reed valve bent into this to where the thing can breathe out, but not suck back in. The pulses from the crankcase is what makes the fuel pump function. So they sent three gaskets. One of them is a little thinner. And I know by the way I took them off that the thinner one goes out here. And then you get the reed valve. Goes like that. Then you got, I'm going to use one of the other gaskets. I don't know why they sent two for that. Oil filter. I got a new one here. There's an O-ring. And I also noticed there's an O-ring in the end of the filter here. And it seals around a nub that's inside there. Okay, there was a new one that came in my kit that fits better than the one that came with the filter itself. Okay, next we're going to install the new valves and we're going to seat them in. We use some um, valve grinding compound. We um, use a little suction cup here and the manual says to grind until you got a polished surface on the valve and in the head of about 40 to 50 thousandths. Well, I've got my caliper set up here. So I've already put a little bit of oil on this stem. Um, I believe that this... Um, Grinding compound I got here starts off with a much coarser grit and gets to be um, finer and finer the more you use it. These valves have almost what I would call a Teflon coating on the face of them. And my suction cup don't want to stick to them very well. Yeah, 
you know, I can't stick to them. Okay, I'm gonna cheat right here. My suction cup does not stick to the valve. Like I said, these valves have, it's almost like a Teflon coating on the head of them. Maybe you can see that. But anyway, I can't get the thing to stick. So I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna stick the valve through there. I got a piece of rubber tubing. I'm gonna stick it on there. I'm gonna get my drill. Now then. Okay, I bet that's going to be seated now. It's definitely good there. Yeah, we got about 45 thousandths there. Okay, now we're ready to put the valves in. First thing we have to do is put these valve seals in. I'm gonna, of course, cover them with oil before I put them in there. And I just push down. Okay, I'm confident those are down all the way now. Now I gotta put uh, the valves in. I've already put the seal in too. I did that uh, off camera. Okay, we have the springs. It's got to go on. Then the spring retainer. And you got to push down on this and get these little keepers in there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set it on a rag so it'll hold the valve up. I'm sure they make a tool for this that I don't have. Plus, when you're missing a finger, it don't help either. All right, I got that one on there, though. There we are. All the valves are in. I'm going to put some oil where the valve stem goes through that seal. There's some alignment dowels here. There's seven bolts total. The bolts that go inside, you have one long one in the middle and two shorter ones on the outside. On this side, we have two longer ones on the outside and two shorter ones in the middle. So they're like this. These are 12 millimeter bolts. I'm just gonna run them in by hand real quick. This is the first bolt, the center and the middle here. I'm just going to snug them up. There's one. This would be number two, according to their diagram. Again, I'm just snugging up. Number three is this one back here. Should go pretty good here. I'm going to go ahead and temporarily attach this pulley here so I can rotate the thing as I need to. Okay, now I can rotate the cam. I 
I have the gasket on there. It goes like this. Top right bolt. I just felt it snug up. I'm going to back it off some. Okay, next we're going to install the cover here. And I do have a new seal to go in here, so I'm going to pull this old one out. This one don't look quite as good as the OEM seal, but I guess it'll work. It looks like the uh, original one was a little bit larger in diameter. Okay, those are all torqued now. Okay, now I have to put this pulley on. It's got a, a boss there with a notch in the pulley. And we have this pulley that goes down here. The key is still on there. Here is the tensioner and the spring okay i've turned that to where the dot is aligned with that uh, bump there on the on the case and this is aligned up here That's still aligned, and that's still aligned, and the tensioner's on there with spring tension on it. I suppose I just let the spring that's got the tension on it be the adjuster, and I snug this down. Well, the motor turns over good. Better turn the motor over. I'm going to have to figure out some way to lock the motor. Oh, yeah. Let's try this again with a screwdriver. There it is. It's definitely there. Okay, now we're going to put this fan on.
here. No way I'm putting this on there. Just checking where these cables come out. Yeah, they come out right below the screw. Well, here it is and buttoned back up into the cart. It's a total rebuild with new rings, pistons, rods, gasket seals, a new fuel pump, plugs, everything. So this thing should run really good. Fix and pull off the two spark plugs. I'm going to turn it over a few times and let the fuel pump prime, hopefully, and some oil, let some oil get up in the top of the motor. So here we go. There's the switch on. Took the plug wires back up and see if this thing will hit. I'm going to choke it just a little bit. Like I said earlier in the video, as I was putting on the timing belt, I made a bad assumption. I didn't look at the manual and I aligned a dot that was on the small timing gear with the bump on the case. That was a bad assumption. After I got the thing installed in the cart here, it wouldn't start. I checked the compression, the compression was low. So I went back and started looking online and found that you're supposed to line the keyway that's in the small timing gear with the bump on the case. So needless to say, I had to pull all this back out, uh, tear it all back apart. You can't get to the timing belt without removing the main clutch pulley. So I did all that, got all that set back up, put it back in the cart, and now I have ignition. Runs fantastic, no smoke, plenty of power. I think I got it right now. Maybe this video has been helpful to you in some way and it's helped you repair your cart, or maybe it's just been entertaining. If it has, do me a favor, hit that like button and subscribe. I really would appreciate it. Thanks again for watching.